Okay, today we are going to talk about an excellent new feature, which is called Bridge Mode. Now, this feature is only available on the 4 Series and 5 Series 4K S2 models at this time. I'm sure they will be available for more models later. But the purpose of Bridge Mode is to be able to use the PoE ports on the back of the network video recorder for any PoE devices. So, of course, it could be access points, intercom units. Effectively speaking, Bridge Mode turns your network video recorder into a PoE switch. Now, whenever this feature is enabled, then, of course, it will remove DHCP from the PoE ports on the back of the network video recorder and remove all references to 10.1.1.1, the internal IP range. Now, whenever you enable Bridge Mode, there are three rules to follow. Number one, you can't exceed the port speed. PoE ports on the back of network video recorders are 10 to 100 megabits per second. Rule number two, the management port where we connect larger switches and of course the internet to, just a reminder, it's 10 to one gigabit per second and that can't go faster either. Rule number three, you can't exceed the total bandwidth of the network video recorder. So if it was a five series with 320 megabits per second, just cause you enable bridge mode, doesn't mean that you can enable more. Okay, now let me just um, talk you through this. So I've actually got a whole rig set up here and I just wanna show you the fact that I'm using this network video recorder more of a PoE switch than I am anything else right now. So let's just take a look. So when you're in the actual network video recorder and you go to the actual interface, then right hand mouse button, main menu, network, switch, you will now see bridge mode is now a selectable option. With bridge mode on, you can see that all of the 10.1.1 elements have all been removed. This is the Dower access point. Now I've got another access point set up on the table across the way over there. And this access point is being powered by the network video recorder. Don't forget that Dower technology is not just a camera and recorder manufacturer. These are our access points and I'm using this access point to be able to communicate with that access point down there. And as you can see with the actual cameras, they are just connected on their 12 volt plugs. But then of course we have no more than a single one second response time. And of course it's perfect. These devices here, they can in fact actually go up to like 300 megabits per second. And if you get the really big ones, they can vary anywhere between three to five kilometers in a line of sight environment. It's a fantastic feature. I've connected the access point on the red network cable. Now let's take a look at the network video recorder. As you will see, that's that same network cable, okay? So in bridge mode, I have an uh, eight channel network video recorder, but I also now have a nine channel PoE switch. Okay, so I've got two five series active deterrent cameras and these two cameras are plugged into the four port switch that I have here. As you will see from the blue cable here, this is the same blue cable over there that is then connecting to the network video recorder. Okay, this is one of our most popular VTO units. Uh, take a look at the orange cable that we have here. This would also be the same orange cable here connected to the network video recorder in bridge mode. So let's not forget about the rules. The PoE ports on the back of the network video recorder are 10 to 100 megabits per second. The management port is 10 to 1 gigabit per second. So that's why I have my large switch here. So if I connected a large amount of cameras to this switch, then of course I will pull them in on the 1 gigabit per second. Since all of my other devices are definitely not going to be anywhere near 100 megabits per second, I of course obviously can connect them into the actual PoE switch. In fact, the black cable here is in fact actually the feed to the router, and this is how I got this device online. That's connected to PoE port number five. Okay, take a look at this. This is my five series, five megapixel active deterrent camera, and I have this connected on my network video recorder, as you can see here now. Now, of course, this network video recorder is on the green cable, which is connected to the PoE port of my network video recorder on this side. But since this MVR is now acting as a pure switch, then of course you can actually see that I'm recording that same camera feed on this network video recorder and this network video recorder. That's why we have two identical displays. That is an excellent disaster recovery feature. And now we can utilize this by using the bridge mode. As you can see, everything is working on the network video recorder and I don't even have a delay on the actual Wi-Fi bridge. So there's my Wi-Fi camera there. A very good response time. Okay, 
So there's all of my cameras there connected to my system, including my VTL, which is being empowered by my network video recorder. I also have cameras directly connected to the network video recorder. And of course, obviously, I have my two active deterrent, which are connected to a PoE switch that is also then connected to my network video recorder. Okay, a fantastic feature, bridge mode. PoE benefits to bridge mode is that the network video recorder can support PoE, PoE plus, and if it has an E on the end of the model number, then that can support ePoE, which is our DAWA economic power over ethernet mode. Like any solution, there's always going to be pros and cons. So let's do the cons first. Now, whenever you actually do this type of bridge mode, then of course, now you cannot do isolation. Of course, whenever you wanted to keep the cameras off of their network, this of course, obviously would be impossible because everything shares the same 192.168. So of course, isolation would no longer be a possibility. Also, you will need to be familiar with IP addressing and you will definitely need a laptop whenever you have your cameras and your network video recorder in bridge mode. Pros. Now, this is a big one here. P2P remote configuration. Since the actual camera has the ability and exposure to the internet, then of course you can modify the actual camera from a remote configuration. You could change the date, time, tripwire, light balance, any configuration can be done over the WAN. Let's not forget the rules about that type of virtual hosting. If the actual camera is connected to the network video recorder through a remote addressing you can configure the network video recorder you cannot configure the camera connected to the network video recorder that's not an option so when you go into the actual software and you click on the e for internet explorer to take on board remote configurations if that camera is plugged into the poe port of the mvr on 10.1.1 something then of course remote configuration remotely is not a possibility. When we're talking about DSS Express and DSS Pro, then of course you get much more features and functionality when DSS talks directly to the IP camera. There will be some feature loss whenever you connect a network video recorder in the middle. A DSS Pro going to an MVR then going to the camera is definitely not as feature rich. However, though, since they're all on the same 192.168, then of course the DSS can talk directly to the camera and you will see there are more features to benefit from. Okay, now bridge mode is going to be a fantastic feature. As you know, we of course obviously do dedicated training here and in the DHSA and the DHSP, we always recommend a switch so you can now carry out those remote configurations, you know, not returning to a site to be able to make a simple IVS change. Well, now that we have bridge mode, we have complete exposure to the internet, we have complete exposure to remote configuration. I think it is absolutely a game-changing feature. Okay, don't forget to like, hit the bell and subscribe. All the best.